six weeks into the Clinton administration. Now, if I had to describe the opening hours of this new administration with two words, I guess the two words would be, Mayday, Mayday! <laughs> Please remain calm. <laughs> President Clinton is in full charge, and Bill is right there beside her. <laughs> The opening hours of the Clinton administration had a few glitches in them. The very first few days, we didn't hear about the major issues like the economy and taxes. No, no, we were distracted by the issue of gays in the military. Now, somehow I missed it during the campaign when Bill Clinton said, elect me and I will distract you all from the major issues with a six-month debate on what happens when soldiers and sailors take showers. Here's an old kind of a drinking song. Maybe you sang it in college whenever people gather around a piano and there's a sing-along. Eventually this old chestnut crops up. I'm sure you remember. I, 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 I. In China they never eat chili. So here comes another verse that's worse than the other verse. So waltz me around again. <laughs> Willie, that's right. We're wishing Bill Clinton the best As he takes up his challenge and quest Though you voted for change You may think it's strange That the hotline's on Hillary's desk Aye, 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 aye Everyone in China, they never eat chili As we are romance with a song and a dance As you waltz us around again, Willie to the middle class, Willie said, relax. I'll get government off of your backs. But now he's elected, will soon be injected right in the butt with a tax. Aye, 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 yee In China, they never reach chili. As we are romance with a song and a dance as you waltz us around again, Willie. The Clintons uh, sort of upset the liberals a little bit when they decided to send their daughter Chelsea to private school. Only in America can people living in public housing Actually, uh, Chelsea goes to a very, very prestigious school here in Washington, Sidwell Friends, originally founded as a Quaker institution, which is quite a coincidence since Chelsea's father had turned Quaker during the Vietnam War. <laughs> and of course, we're familiar with the two uh, unsuccessful nominees for the uh, job of Attorney General, Zoe Baird and Kimba would and then Clinton realized he was going to have to find a woman with a normal first name <laughs> so they uh, found a woman named Janet Reno Janet Reno and when she first appeared before the media she was asked to describe herself and she said quote I am an awkward old maid who likes men <laughs> Was that really necessary? And, and so the Clinton team is just about all set for America to behold. Hey, look them over. What have we here? Welcome Clinton's army in wonks. We're up to here. Counting the beans in their wonkish pursuit with a plan to fix the economy with numbers that don't compute. We got a new administration. All Set to go, a happy combination of Carter and Perot. We can sleep at night just knowing their ideas have no flaw, because they've been tried in Arkansas. There's Ron Brown at Commerce, of whom it must be said, with all his corporate clients, Ron is still in bed. There's Donna Shalala, Human Services Select. Sure, it's the same old Shalala who's politically correct. There's just one tiny problem, the case of Zoe Baird, followed by Judge Kimba Wood, and Bill was unprepared for the small detail while their confirmations were delayed. A green card for the maid. 
Hamilton's honeymoon's the shortest that ever had been known. What good is a honeymoon when Dole's the chaperone? He's hiding under the president's bed, you'll find him there, you'll bet. And that's as close as Dole will get, though he'll be running. That's as close as Dole will get. For the first time since 1863, the Statue of Freedom on top of the dome of the Capitol building was removed and taken down for cleaning and repair. And that was quite a scene as the helicopter lowered the Statue of Freedom to the ground as ATF agents tried to shoot it down. That was the only... <laughs> Other than that, it was fine. So they put the Statue of Freedom in the parking lot uh, in front of the Capitol building. And for the first time, you, you could see it up close. And she's wearing a helmet and carrying a sword and a shield. And Senator Jesse Helms <laughs> came up to her and asked her if she was a lesbian. <laughs> Senator Bob Packwood came by and patted her on the fanny. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see that picture in the paper last week uh, investigating the issue of gays in the military? Here you have Senator Sam Nunn and John Warner down at the naval base in Norfolk in a submarine on their hands and knees looking to see the size of the sailors' bunks. I mean, that is ridiculous. Look at that. They look, they look like Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson there. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Son, did you ever see a man naked? <laughs> well, a couple of months ago, I was in New York City right after the explosion of the World Trade Center. And before I went on, somebody said, well, certainly you're not going to talk about that tragedy, are you? And I said, no, it's just too controversial, compounded by the fact that among those arrested were alleged members of the group Islamic Jihad. Well, I knew it wasn't my people, the Catholics. <laughs> No, Catholics would never have rented a truck. <laughs> no, no, they would have raffled off a Buick. <laughs> Again, not long ago, I, uh, I spoke to a predominantly uh, Catholic audience. There were priests and nuns in, in, in the crowd, and, and somebody asked me, well, they said, certainly you're not going to discuss the ongoing uh, scandals uh, in the Catholic Church involving priests. And I said, no, it's just too touchy. It's too emotional, and the Church never asked for my advice, but if they ever did, I'd say, look, if they want to get celibate men, why don't they get guys who've been married for 30 years? <laughs> Already the health care task force has had a direct effect on the health of this nation. It has given a headache to every doctor in America. <laughs> Those doctors are worried sick about what is going to come out of that health care task force. They, they're very nervous. They're very depressed. On every golf course in the country, <laughs> all of the flags are at half mast. <laughs> so hello. So Hillary gave her own prescription to the doctors, and the prescription is, take a pay cut and call me in the morning. The doctors respond by saying, if God wanted a freeze on our fees, he never would have invented the yacht. <laughs> well, also from the FBI files, came the story just a couple of weeks ago that back in the McCarthy era, in the bad old days of blacklisting during the Cold War, there was a Hollywood informant who would supply the FBI with the names of certain Hollywood personalities suspected of having, of being communist sympathizers. Now, who was that? Who was the informant? What? Walt Disney, that's right! Hi, ho. Hi-ho, hi-ho, blacklisting we will go. Walt Disney said, if you're a red, the FBI will want to know. Hi-ho, Walt's weeding out the spies. His chief informant is Snow White and her friends, those seven little guys. 
We worked, worked, worked the whole day through on whose career is dead. Miss Riding Hood is finished. Did you know that she's a red? We're dark and dopey, grumpy. Disney doesn't work alone. You know us by our real names. McCarthy and Roy Cohn. Hi ho, hi ho. Walt Disney lives again. What they take in at Disneyland pays off Buchanan's last campaign. Hi ho, Buchanan's last campaign. Well, history was made two days ago, as you know, when the Israelis and the Palestinians signed their agreement in Washington, D.C. And I never thought I'd see the day Yasser Arafat in Washington. And did you notice, of course, he was wearing his ceremonial two-day growth of beard <laughs> instead of the usual five. And uh, Yasser was just in town anyway to do the Larry King show. And uh, <laughs> he said, oh, Larry, I love your show. I love, I, love, I love CNN. I love your show. We get it in Tunis. We love it. We also get Letterman. I love your show, Larry. You are the greatest. I want to meet Susan Rook and Bobby Batista. Anyway, <laughs> so he was late. He was late at the ceremony because his hotel a valet had sent his hat out with the tablecloths. Well, after the ceremony... <laughs> what else did the president do this summer? He went to Denver to meet with Pope John Paul II. He wanted to get the pope to bless his economic plan. The pope said, I don't do miracles. He went, to, <laughs> he went to the economic summit conference in Tokyo, and that was the first presidential visit to Japan since a couple of years ago, you recall, when George Bush... <laughs> went over there and did a Pepto-Bismol commercial. <laughs> yeah, I think we should start admitting to ourselves something that I think is true. We should admit it, the fact that Japan just doesn't like us. That's okay, but they don't like us. If they had better wine, they'd be France, for heaven's sake. <laughs> The president was successful in getting Joycelyn Elders uh, confirmed as our Surgeon General. Uh, she, as a health official in Arkansas, got a real good deal on condoms are us in Cambodia. <laughs> and I don't, listen, I don't think we needed a, a Surgeon General anymore. I mean, the job was created back in the 50s, take a doctor, dress him up in a fancy military uniform so he can warn us about smoking. And they called him a Surgeon General. They called him that because nobody had thought of calling him an emphysema czar. <laughs> I, we don't need a Surgeon General anymore. Could there be anybody left in this country who does not know that smoking during sex with somebody you met an hour ago is hazardous to your health? <laughs> The president had his hair cut on Air Force One, parked on the tarmac at Los Angeles Airport, while all the other flights were delayed in the sky. Remember that? He looked pretty, he looked handsome, and well-groomed and perfectly chic, in a haircut that costs what folks make in a week. Mr. Christoph, his hairstylist, with a clip and a snip at each lock, and a far cry from supercuts in Little Rock. There's Air Force One, it's just standing there with all the other planes stacked in the blue. There was no dissent while the president had a manicure and a shampoo. What has happened to the kid from Hope, Arkansas, good old boy Bill? There's real change, he's Prince William of Beverly Hills, Prince William of Beverly Hills. There was a testy moment, you remember, in the White House Rose Garden, the day when, when Clinton introduced Judge Ginsburg, Ginsburg to the media, and an uppity reporter from ABC News, Britt Hume, asked an impertinent question. And he was referring to the fact that Ginsburg was about the third or fourth suggested nominee in this uh, story. And uh, Britt Hume said, Mr. President, I respectfully uh, suggest, sir, sir, uh, <laughs> isn't this indicative of your zigzag approach 
to making nominations while Clinton went ballistic and he looked at Brit Hume and he said, don't you ever call my flip-flops a zigzag. <laughs> Let the record show that in the summer of 1993, Bill Clinton bombed Iraq. He did. Remember that? Bombed Iraq, and we are living in a time when the President of the United States must order the Navy fighters off of the aircraft carrier, having the largest number of gay crew members. And that was the compromise they reached regarding gays in the military. Don't ask, don't tell, don't touch, don't enlist. Here we over hill, over day, we will hit the dusty trail. For the Army, the going gets rough. We are straight, we are gay. Who is who, we cannot say. At the dance, we'll find out soon enough. For it's high, high, he, you have no identity. Call out your preference and you're gone. For wherever you go, Sam Nunn will always know as the army goes snooping along. Over hill, over dale, your discharge is in the mail if your weekend was spent with a guy. We're in peace, we're in war, we're in denial, that's for sure. Yes, the guidelines are clear, simply lie. To Marines, I say, if this applies, well, Semper Fey. If your Air Force then come out, you're out of here. And here's Navy news, gay sailors will be used as lookouts at tailgate next year. As lookouts at tailgate next year. Bill Clinton has had two good days in office. Two out of 260 isn't bad. If this was baseball, he would have been sent down to Albuquerque by now. And the, uh, well, one of the good days was uh, when he emceed the historic signing of the peace agreement between the Israelis and the PLO. And what a, what a historic sign. Do you ever think you'd see the day when Yasser Arafat would be in Washington, for heaven's sake, shaking hands with the Prime Minister of Israel, Rabin, and, and there was Arafat, all smiled. <laughs> Rabin looked like he was meeting his future son-in-law for the first time. <laughs> the other good day uh, he had was when he delivered a speech to the Joint Session of Congress on the health care plan. It was a good speech, his detractors the Republicans admitted that it was a good speech. Part I got out of it where he said, we can pay for health care because there's fat in the system. Well, there's fat in his system, we know that. I mean, this is a man whose nutrition advisor is Ronald McDonald, for heaven's sake. <laughs> and all year long in Somalia, Mohammed Idid was a hunted fugitive. The only time we ever saw him was when he held a press conference. <laughs> Why didn't CNN tell the army where the hell he was? <laughs> Go to storybook land and see the Bob Packwood diary, boys and girls. <laughs> Interesting thing about that diary and the debate going on in the Senate Select Committee on Grabbing and Groping and... <laughs> And that diary situation is an exact mathematic uh, equation because the number of senators opposed to the release of the Packwood diary is equal to the number of senators who are in the Packwood diary. <laughs> well, Richard Nixon sent Bob Packwood a bit of sage advice. <laughs> Burn it. Um, we are done with the battle of NAFTA. The opponents all said we don't have to. Saying workers will now get the shafta. That's the Mexican word for NAFTA. They say NAFTA from tariffs will free us. General Motors will dine on tortillas. Bill and Al are the new Pancho Villas. From the White House they say buenos dias. N-A-F-T-A. Uh, try it again. N-A-F-T-A. Everyone shout, ole. What pesos would you pay for a Mexican Chevrolet? President Salinez, with our partner Clinton says, remember who's the president. 
when the Buicks are made in Warren. The opponents of NAFTA were planning to meet with their fellow loose cannons. Jesse Jackson in bed with Buchanan. Crawling in with them later was Nader. The opponents all cry, the sky's fallen. Ross Perot back to Texas is crawling. I hear he's teamed up with Ed Rollins, supporting the church of their choice. Hey, N-A-F-T-A. Everyone shout, ole. What pesos would you pay for a Mexican Chevrolet? President Salinez is our partner, Clinton says. Remember who's the pres when the Buicks are made in Juarez. Now, here's my plan. All you gotta do, you see, you make Mexico a state and the jobs stay in this country, I think. <laughs> well, watching Perot wasn't pretty as he babbled from city to city. Neither eloquent, cogent, nor witty. Finally done in by NAFTA, a pity. Finally done in by NAFTA, a pity. Yeah, yeah lovely. Thank you very much. Russell provides information and he